when you want to verify trigonometric identities, what you want to do is you want to make the left side of the equation equal to the right-hand side of the equation, all right? Without multiplying or dividing both sides of the equation or adding or subtracting to both sides of the equation. So we tend to work with one side independently of the other. You could choose which side you want to work with. It could be the left side, it could be the right side. You could work with both of them as long as you don't bring something from one side of the equation to the other, all right? So what we're looking for is transformations or substitutions that would allow us to convert from one form of an expression to another. So we see tangent of theta plus cotangent of theta. All right, we need to make that into a secant theta, cosecant theta. So one thing that you might remember is that tangent is the same as saying sine over cosine. Cotangent is the same as saying cosine theta over sine theta. All right, so from there we would apply an algebraic skill. In this case, we'd be looking at something like, uh, you know, just concepts related to simplifying rational expressions like adding fractions, you know, multiplying, dividing, all that good stuff. So here we want to add two fractions. The way to handle that would be to multiply both the top and bottom of the fraction by something that would allow it to become a, or allow it to have a common denominator. So typically, you know, if all else fails, we just multiply each fraction by the other fraction's denominator. All right, so for the first fraction, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the sine of theta. And for the second one, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the cosine of theta. All right. Simplify. We'd have sine squared theta over sine theta cosine theta. When you're verifying identities, hopefully you, you remember this from last year, you can't skip any steps because if you do, then you, you're not providing what we call a rigorous proof, all right? A, a, a trig identity verification, they're, they're also known as trig, trig proofs or trig identity proofs, all right? You remember from geometry or gap that whenever you created a proof, it had to have every little detail in it to lead you from the beginning to the, the conclusion without missing a beat. All right. So cosine squared theta is the result of cosine times cosine. But now that we have that common denominator, I could put it all together and get, oops, that's not a marker, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. All right, and what is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta? It equals one. It equals one. All right, so we have one over sine theta cosine theta. Now, I generally I'm not gonna make it too far during class without talking about Desmos at some point. So here we are, I'm gonna talk about it now. If you happen not to remember some trig facts, Odds are you can kick it into Desmos and see, and see if it's a true or, or, or false relationship. So what I can do here is I can type in the sine squared of, you can put in a theta if you want. If you go to the keyboard, there is a theta there. Plus cosine. Then you just got to hit the back arrow to get a power of two in there. Theta. But sometimes it'll give you an error, like you see here. If you ever get an error, it'll say, it'll give you a suggestion. Try adding r equals to the beginning of this equation. I mean, that, that could be fine, but you could also switch up the variable and create a slider. Because theta is a default variable, it's not thought of as a constant. So even though we're working with thetas here, you're tempted to put thetas in, you're tempted to put x's in, it won't always work because it, Desmos allows that to vary. It doesn't allow it to be constant. 
What I want is a constant to be plugged in. Creating a slider is gonna allow me to put a variety of values in for A. So when I slide my slider, you'll see that it has no impact on the result of sine squared plus cosine squared. All right, in every single case, no matter what the A value is, in every single case, the result is equal to one. Now let's say I put in a minus sign. Well, it's certainly not equal to one when A is equal to nine, but you see, depending on the value of A I select, it's giving you a different result. That's not an identity. An identity never changes, all right? It always has the same value. So sine squared minus cosine squared would not be a rule or an identity, but sine squared plus cosine squared is one. So you could always verify, just the, the thing is, you know, you, you, you're tempted to put in a, a theta because the problem says theta, just use some, what we call a dummy variable, like A for angle if you want, all right? So that's a little, little nifty trick because if you don't remember that something is an identity, I can't draw a straight line and save my life. Uh, if you don't remember something is an identity, then you could always use Desmos to sort of reinvent it. All right. I don't, I don't do the whole double jeopardy thing where it's like, okay, you struggled with the concept last year. So let me see how many points I can take off for you not knowing it this year. You know, you already lost points for it last year. Let's, let's just move on, find other ways to do it. All right, one over sine theta is the same as one over, oh, I'm sorry, one over sine theta, cosine theta is the same as one over sine theta times one over cosine theta. One over sine theta is the same as cosecant. So I'll just draw a little arrow here. And one over cosine theta is the same as saying secant. I'm just saving myself a little bit of a step here just so I don't have to rewrite it in the appropriate order. Like, like I have to, in theory, you'd write one over cosine theta times one over sine theta to make the conversion, you know, so it's extremely explicit. But that's, you know, that's, that's a little overkill. So just indicating that the result of the one over cosine becomes the secant and one over sine becomes the cosecant is good enough. Now you have equality and you've completed your proof. All right. All of the proofs that I would give you, they, they're all gonna work out. And that, that's to say in a review, when we get to the, the calculus stuff, what's gonna happen is we're, we're never gonna do a problem where it says prove the following is true. It's just these relationships are gonna work their way into other problems, more advanced stuff. All right. So that's where I'm gonna leave it.